all you need to do is to just click, click and click and Photoshop continues to create unlimited color grading styles for you. We have already covered this technique in this video years ago, but you can take it a level up and that brings us to our very first technique, split gradient. By the way, if none of this made sense to you, don't worry, I'm there with you. We can understand it together. And the very first thing we would do is create a gradient map. Now, what is a gradient map, you might ask? It is simply a map. A map which maps the colors of highlights and shadows and every color in between. First of all, click on the adjustment layer icon and click on gradient map. Have a look at the bar right here. The right hand side is white and the left hand side is black. So whatever color is on the right hand side, the highlights would be colored with that color. And whatever color is on the left hand side, the shadows would be colored with that color. So if you single click right here, if let's say we set the right hand side to red, have a look, the highlights are now red and the shadows are now green. There we go. And that basically is gradient maps. Now you can create as many points as you want. For example, at this stage, maybe we want some blue in there. And at this stage, maybe we want some other color in there. So you get the point. So instead of picking every color right here, what if you make it completely random? And the way to do it is by changing the type from solid to noise. But then again, there are so many colors, just too many. So to reduce the amount of colors, just make it smooth. So we make it smooth by decreasing what? The roughness. So let's decrease it to about 5%. Now, here's the secret button that appears. Whenever you go ahead and choose noise, the randomize appears. Now you can click on randomize to generate random colors. We know we want the essence of these colors not absolute colors themselves. So we're gonna take the help of blend modes. So change the blend mode from normal. You can also try overlay. Soft light is a milder version of overlay. So let's go with soft light. And then again, you might have to decrease the opacity on top of that. And that is the whole idea. Now, when you go right here, single click on the bar of the properties, you can continue clicking on randomize to create as many colors as you want. And this gives you infinite possibilities. Whenever you're confused about which direction to take your color grading to, you can use this technique to just explore. Now, let us say I like this, but only for the shadows, not for the highlights. And that brings us closer to our technique, and it is this. Let's hit OK for now. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. Now, there's not enough right hand side, so let's extend it. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. This is gonna bring the layer styles dialog box. Now, inside of Blender, we're gonna take it away from the bright areas of the underlying layer or the layer that lies under it. So let's take it away just like that. But then again, have a look. This is harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and just take it all the way apart. Now we can adjust it later, but for right now, let's keep it that way. Hit OK and this one was for shadows. Now let's create one more and you guessed it right where we are going with this. Simply make a duplicate of the shadows by pressing Ctrl or Command J and do the opposite blend if. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. Let's reset it the way it was. And this time, simply take it away from the shadows. Hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart. Hit OK. And these are the highlights. So now you can independently choose the color of the shadows and the highlights. Let's select the shadows and keep clicking on randomize. Oh, I like that one. Hit OK. Let's turn on the highlights. Let's go with this one right here. And it's already looking fantastic. Click on randomize to see what you like. Oh, that is incredible. Now you can work on the opacity. So let's say the shadows was just way too much. So I would decrease it, let's say to about 58, 56, that's fine. Highlight is fine and there you go. You have an easy color grade. Just a quick tip, if you wanna make it even easier, just record a simple Photoshop action for it. And the only thing the Photoshop action would do is create two gradient maps, one for the shadows and the other one for the highlights. That's it. All you have to do is to click on randomize to pick between different colors. By the way, I've already recorded that action. And if you're a Piximperfect Patreon member, you can download the action. It's available for you. Just playing this action creates the highlights and the shadows color grading gradient maps. And from here, you can just click on randomize to pick your color for the shadows and pick your colors for the highlights. Of course, you can control the amount of highlights and shadows you want. So if you go to the blend if you can control how much of the highlight you want. It doesn't have to be standard. So if this is the kind of look you want to go for, go for it. Now, of course, on top of it, if you want a little more shine and fade, we can call our old buddy, good buddy, best buddy, curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. First of all, let's add some highlights to it. So take the slider on the right to the left. I love those highlights. But then again, if you want it on the extreme highlights, double click on the right hand side of the layer. Use Blend If to just have it on the highlight areas like this. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, break it 
absolutely apart. And there you go. Take a look at the highlights. Looks fantastic, isn't it? So here's the before, here's the after. Love those highlights. Now, if you want to add some fade, create another curves adjustment layer. And this time, let's take the shadows up, just like this. Now, to add a little contrast, let's create a point right here and do something like this. I like that fade. Now, of course, I would select the top layer, hold the shift key, select the bottom most layer, adjustment layer, press control or command G, and then decrease the overall opacity and slowly and gradually increase it to my liking. Keep it subtle. 64, here's the before, here's the after. There you go. Moving on to technique number two, and that, my friend, is image grading. All you need is the color and the atmosphere from any image you like, and boom, it's done. And one of the most convenient places to get incredible stock footage and images is Storyblocks, the sponsor of today's video. The biggest problem with getting creative assets is that it gets expensive real quick with most stock platforms charging per asset. So let's say you got a footage and that just did not work for your project. That's money wasted right there. On top of that, the licensing can be extremely complicated. Storyblocks fixes that with unlimited stock footage, images, music, sound effects, and even templates and animations like you see right now in this video. And with their library, you have the complete freedom to test whatever you want. If certain thing doesn't work for you, get another one. It's unlimited. Oh, what was that? You also get a Storyblocks Premiere Pro plugin, where you can directly search and bring in the content to your timeline without having to switch platforms. All of this with a simple subscription cost without any a la carte credits or hidden fees. Check out Storyblocks. Link is in the description and we're going to use it as well to find an image for color grading. So let's select photos right here and we're going to search for, let's say, sunset. I always loved sunset colors colors. Lots of wonderful colors. I love this one, this one as well. So many of them to choose from. Actually, let's go for the first one. Back in Photoshop and all we need to do is to just drag and drop this photo right here. So right click on it and first of all, let's flip horizontal because we want the sun to be on this side because the light on the subject is coming from the left hand side. But you can experiment with whatever you like. Press Ctrl or Command D. Let's keep it like this. Now let's fill the entire canvas with this color grading image. Now we want the sun to be in this location. So place the anchor point right here. One of the quick tricks to do that is holding the Alt key or the Option key and clicking right there. It's just placed. Now hold the Alt key or the Option key to make it larger from that point. You can also hold the Shift key to kind of stretch it like that. Let's keep it this way. That's nice. Hit Enter or Return. All we have to do now is to blur it. Go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. That's how you should pronounce it. I always used to say Gaussian Blur. So obliterate all the details. 470 is good. Hit OK and change the blend mode to whatever you like. Whatever that works for you. You can scroll through different ones. And again, I think soft light would work the best. Let's name this image grade. Now here are a couple of tricks. Let's say you didn't want it in the shadows. So take it away from the shadows. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and just take it away from the shadows by taking the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it to break it apart, take it all apart like this, and we're going to keep it like that. There you go. Now look at the grade. Here's the before, here's the after. That's fantastic, isn't it? Now, you want a little more intensity, press Ctrl or Command J, make a duplicate, and again, we only want it in certain parts. So click on the Mask button right there, take a gradient, you can take a radial gradient up to you and let's create a gradient like that. There you go. That's even a better look. Now, when doing all of this, you might have noticed that the original skin color is kind of going away. So how do we get the skin colors back? Just simply make a copy of the original image. In this case, the background layer. So select the background layer, press Ctrl or Command J and place it at the very top. Now we only want the colors and just the colors of the subject back for it. Make a selection of the subject. How do we do that? Select any of these three tools right here. And at the top, you would see Select Subject. I would recommend that you choose Cloud if you're not concerned about privacy and click on Select Subject. It does a better job because it uses cloud processing, which is more accurate. For now, once the selection is active, click on the Mask button. Now we only wanted the colors of the subject. So change the blend mode from normal to guess what? Color. But then again, this is just too much. So decrease the opacity. We wanted the colors of the color grading as well, right? So let's set it to about 22. That's fine. That way we have a little bit color back. Here's the before. Completely colors are going away. Here's the after. Color of the skin back. You can increase the amount up to you. And I think at about 36 would be fine. On top of that, the sky is the limit. You can do a variety of things. For example, I've already done this. Added a hue saturation adjustment layer to change the color of the shadows. This is again reduced opacity. Otherwise it would be just way too much. 
On top of that, we darkened the background. Simple. We added some highlights to the eyes. Again, there are videos for it. You can watch these right here. The next technique is just mind boggling. Trust me on this. And this has been a recent development. I don't know why most of you are not using it. It's just crazy. So for it, you would need the latest version of Photoshop. The version that I'm using is written right over here. So first of all, you would make a copy of the background layer or whatever layer you want to work on. And then, yes, we are talking about camera raw. Go to filter and then camera raw filter. Now with the later versions a lot, by that I mean a ton of presets have been introduced. And these are not regular presets. They can be adaptive. They can be steps as well. Let me just show this to you. Now, if you go to presets right here, now of course you have your standard presets and there are tons and tons and tons of them. First of all, of course, you have your regular presets, for example, for medium skin, deep skin, light skin, all kinds for seasons. Now, in this case, you can use whatever you want. You don't have to stick to any category and you already knew that. So let's go with travel presets. And the best part about it is that you can hover through them and pick what you like. For example, I love this one. I also love this one as well. Let's go with this one. This is a very standard preset. Now, not only this, you get a chance to increase or decrease the amount of the preset. So let's go with 118%. Now here's the real magic. If you scroll up, there are these presets called adaptive. Now let's say we choose adaptive subjects. Have a look. It's only going to affect the subject. So for example, if you want to make the subjects pop, there you go. Instant pop, warm pop, soft pop, actually soft, cool soft. For this example, let's go with pop. And of course, you can control the amount of how much you want the subject to pop which is crazy. So let's keep it at 100. Now let me show you something more. It does not stop there. It's mind boggling. Trust me. So if you open up adaptive portrait right here, you can enhance the entire portrait. Have a look. The skin has been treated a little bit. The eyes have been brightened. You can also just enhance the eyes. So here's the before. Here's the after. So let's click on enhance eyes right here. And you can control how much enhancement you want. So this is no enhancement. You can increase the enhancement. So I mean, this is this is just a revolution. You can also whiten the teeth by just clicking right here and you can control how much you want to whiten the teeth. There you go. You can add texture to the hair by clicking right here. There you go. You can control the amount of texture you want to add. Now, what about the steps that we were talking about? You can add particular features according to what you want with just a few clicks. For example, let's say you want to add some vignette to it. You would scroll down, go to vignetting and you can add light medium or heavy vignette. Let's say I want to add heavy vignette. Now you might think you only have three controls, but wait, you have this slider right here. Even with light, medium and heavy, you have this slider to increase it or decrease it. So crazy. Now, let's say you want to add some film grain to it. Just add light, medium or heavy grain. Medium is fine and you can increase or decrease. This is just a miracle right here. And of course, on top of this miracle, you have the option to absolutely customize it. Let's say you want to decrease the highlights. I would decrease it right here. And you, my friend, are in absolute love with this style. So how do you save it? Now, of course, you can save it as your own preset by pressing Control Shift P, Command Shift P. Create preset dialog box will show up. Also, you can go to preset, click on the three dots, click on create preset. Another way of doing that is by clicking on the three dots right here. Click on create preset. So many ways of doing it. Pix, warm, portrait. Let's place it inside of the group. Let's create a new group. Pix, portrait. Hit OK. You can save the masking if you turn that on. Have a look right here. You can make sure that any image where the preset is applied, all of these things are automatically masked. Hit OK. And there you have inside of Pix portrait, Pix, warm, portrait. Even if you reset everything to default, have a look, it's exactly apply. And here's the best part. You can control the entire preset and increase or decrease the amount. That's crazy. I love this look. That's just amazing. Now, there's so many presets right here. It can be pretty confusing as to what preset to use when. But the more you begin to use, the more you realize there are particular preset that you find yourself using again and again. So how do we separate them out? Let's take a look at this example. Press Ctrl or Command J. First of all, make a copy. Let's convert this into a smart object. By the way, if you're using the Piximperfect compositing panel, simply click on Convert to Smart Object and you don't have to do any of that. I always keep it open. End of my marketing. Let's go to Filter, Camera, Raw Filter. Now there are so, so many presets right here. We can keep on scrolling all day and get old. Let's say I want to give it an autumn look. So inside of Seasons, Autumn, you can scroll through all of them. Let's say I like TM12 and I find myself using it again and again. So you see the star icon right next to it? Activate it 
and it will be saved to presets at the very top. So all of your favorites will be at one place so you don't have to scroll through the entire list. Let's apply this and here's the before, here's the after instantly. It's amazing. But also it's creating a little bit of banding in the sky and the culprit, we can find it in the edit section. So once you go to the edit section, you can close all sections. You can see which sections are applied and you can turn off and on to see which is creating that banding. I think it is the color mixer. It's changing the colors of the sky. Let's open that up. And if you go to luminance, have a look. These are just moved way too much. So let's bring them to normal. And it should be fine. There you go. It's fixed. Now let's get back to presets. How about we do something to the sky? So if you scroll down, there's adaptive sky, blue drama, dark drama. This is just incredible. Let's go with this one. Again, it's too much. Decrease the amount to about this much. You can also apply a little bit to the water. You can take your time to do it. Adaptive subject. Let's add a little bit glow right here. Decrease the amount. That can be too much. And maybe add a vignette. Scroll down. Heavy vignetting. Again, you have entire control over it. I think this is fine. And you can, of course, add a little bit of medium green right here. Decrease the amount slightly. Hit OK. Take a look at the difference. This is drastic. Now we do remember when the luminosity of the orange was high, it was creating an amazing effect on the skin, but bad effect on the sky. So we can use Photoshop for masking. So make a duplicate of this layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Again, since this is a smart object, we can go back and make changes. Let's go to Camera Raw Filter. And in this layer, we will increase the luminance of oranges. Have a look at the skin. It's just bringing it out so perfectly. You can also work with the reds to see what it does. I think that's fine. Maybe a little more orange, hit OK. But it's also damaging the sky. We don't want that. So if you're using the Piximperfect compositing panel, all you do is go to the masking and click on Remove Background. That's it. You're done. Everything will be done automatically. It's automatically masked out and the orange thing is only applied on the subject. So here's the before, here's the after. It's bringing it out so beautifully. Now let me share with you how to do it without the plugin. Otherwise, you're going to say, Mish is always a sellout. He's just selling his own stuff. Don't worry. All you got to do is to pick any of these three tools. Click on select subject. Once the selection is active, click on the mask button. It's the same thing. You can also add a little bit of that to the background by double clicking on the mask, opening up the properties. If you don't see it, go to window, make sure properties is checked and decrease the density. That way it adds a little bit to the background. It's like opacity for the mask. 77 is fine. Let us take a look. Here's the before. So plain. And here is the after. That is with just a few clicks. It's just amazing. If you want to pick the colors of highlights, midtones, and shadows manually, this, my friend, is the easiest way to do it. First of all, let's make a copy of the background layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters or pick Simperfect compositing panel. I keep it open all the time, by the way. Just click on convert to smart object. Sorry for the cheap marketing. Now go to filter, camera, raw filter. Just go to the most obvious section and that, my friend, is color grading. Open that up and first of all, set the brightness level of each section. So set the brightness level of midtones. So I'm going to set it a little higher. Highlights, we want a little less highlights and shadows, we can make them a little darker. Now set the colors. How do we set the colors? Understand the concept right here. The more the circle is away from the center, the higher the saturation will be and moving it around the circle will change the hue. Keep in mind, hue is what color? Saturation is how much intensity of that particular color. Make sense? Hue what color? Saturation is how much color. And then you have the lightness, which you controlled with this one. So let's say you pick this red color for the highlights. The more you move it away from the center, the intensity of the red will increase. The more you move it towards the center, the intensity of the red will decrease. If you want to change the color, you would move it around. Now, here's one trick about locking that you will love. If you hold the control or command, have a look, the saturation is locked. No matter what you do, the saturation stays the same, but the hue changes. Now you can set the hue to whatever you want. For example, let's say I love this particular color. And then you can hold the shift key that will lock the hue and the saturation will move. No matter what you do, only the saturation changes. So let's say I want this much of it and you can leave it at that. So what I recommend is first bring the circle somewhere in the middle and then hold the control or command and pick the hue, pick which color looks good to you. So in this case, I guess this color is the one to go and then hold the shift key and control the intensity of that. You can again hold the control or command and play with the hue. Control for locking the hue, 
shift for locking the saturation. You can remember it as shift, S for shift, S for saturation. And the other one is control. Let's pick one color for the shadows, just a simple color grade. Now on top of that, of course, you can do some basic changes like decreasing the highlights, it's all up to you. But if you just wanna to say to Photoshop, all right, this is the color I want for the highlights, this is the one that I want for midtones, and this is what I want for shadows, this is the easiest way to do it. Hit okay, this is a simple grade, here's the before, here's the after. You can go back and play with the colors as much as you want. Now, if you want granular control and your image has a lot of color in it, I highly recommend using selective color. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose selective color. Now, there's a simple concept right here. Whatever you target is whatever you modify. Let's say I targeted the reds. So whatever you do with these four sliders will only affect the reds of the image. All right, let's reset that by clicking this button. And again, selective color is not limited to specific colors. You can target the whites, neutrals, and blacks. Let's start with the whites. As you can see, there's a lot of hot spots in the skin. So let's increase the blacks right there. And there you go, that is fixed. Again, it brings in a lot of yellows. So let's take it down. Let's try taking the magenta down as well. There you go. Here's the before, here's the after. Already we have come a long way. Now there's no rocket science in here. This is art, there's no right or wrong. So let's say we go with the neutrals. Move the sliders a lot to the right, a lot to the left. See what looks good to you and go with it. So in this case, I will move it slightly to the right. That takes away a little bit of excess brown. By the way, if you're wondering, absolute is of higher intensity. So if you select that, as you can see, it is just too much. I usually always work with relative, at least inside of Photoshop unless you want a little more intensity. Let's go to blacks, and maybe you want a little more detail in the hair, so let's try decreasing it. It creates a faded effect, and you can introduce cyan or decrease it up to you. It's becoming a little more brownish, so maybe I should introduce cyan. Keep in mind, RGB is the opposite of CMY, cyan is the opposite of red, magenta is the opposite of green, and yellow is the opposite of blue. So I'm reducing the reds or the browns by increasing the cyan. I think it should do for now and now it's time for us to target specific colors. Let us start with reds. Now keep in mind whenever you're working with portraits, reds and yellows are going to be the colors that you're going to be working with the most and they're going to have the most effect. So just making the reds darker by adding black, it adds such fantastic contrast to the image. You can introduce a little bit of the cyan or decrease it, see what works good for you. Now let's work with the yellows. Adding black again enhances the contrast right here. I don't think there is any green in the image. Let's move the blacks, just these two Bs right here, that's fine. I don't think there will be cyans a lot, no blues as well, but there can be magentas. Again, let's add some blacks to it, adds a little bit of contrast right here. And this, my friend, already just improves the image so much. So here is the before, and here is the after. Now, always keep in mind, whenever you're working with an image with a lot of desirable colors, I'm not talking about colors which distract the image but a lot of desirable colors like this image, it's essential that we are not heavy handed with the color grading. It's important that we are not adding a lot of colors to the midtones, shadows and highlights like we did in previous examples. I love how diverse cultures are in this world. In one culture, there's a lot of color in the wedding attire and in another culture, the colors are more sober. For example, in this image, we have more scope to add more colors to the midtones, highlights and shadows. But in this case, there are so many colors, it's important to be light with adding colors, but you can modify and target specific colors. So there are different techniques for different situations. Now, of course, on top of it, you can apply one more technique by pressing Control, Alt, Shift, and E. This creates a merged layer of everything you see on the canvas right now. And then go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, hit OK, then go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Now, inside of Camera Raw, there are some subtle presets. If you go there, if you look at portraits, there are presets for medium skin, light skin, deep skin. So right here, there is medium skin for this lady. Let's open that up and let's scroll through each and every one of them. PM6 looks good, PM1 looks good. I'm in love with this one. On top of that, of course, you can open Adaptive Portrait and just enhance it once, like this. It whitens the eye instantly, did you notice that? So here's the before, here's the after, have a look. This is such a good enhancement. And we are ready to go. Hit OK, there you go. Here's the before, here's the after. And if you think it's too much, of course, you can decrease the overall opacity. Now, since Selective Color is already inside of it, merged, you can turn it off and decrease the overall opacity. I think at about 80% is fine. When it comes to color grading, there are 100 other techniques. And looking at these five, I hope that you come up with 15 of your own. It doesn't matter how you do it. What matters is getting the results you want 
and most importantly, enjoying the process. For example, let's say you want to get experimental and you want to create colors that you have not created before. In that case, you can use the split gradient technique to randomize different gradients and just click on randomize to create colors absolutely at random. On the other hand, let's say you want specific colors on the highlights, midtones, and shadows, then you can use the color grading section inside of ACR to exactly set that up. There is no right or wrong. You can also use plugins for color grading like the infinite color panel. All you have to do is to click on create and it continues to generate infinite color grading styles for you. And of course, everything is adjustable. You can increase the intensity. You can also use the Piximperfect compositing panel. Although it is made for compositing, there are color grading features to bring together the elements of a composite. And all you have to do is to click on create thumbnails and here's the magic. It gives you a preview of all of the color grading presets in here and you can take your color grading in a particular direction. Let's say you like this and now you want to create similar color grading styles in this direction. Click on random. Let's say you liked this one. I love it. And then decrease the opacity. This is also adjustable. Plugins can be an entirely different video for some other time. I'll link to both plugins in the description. Let us do a quick little recap. In the split gradient, we created a gradient changed the type to noise and clicked on randomize. We decreased the roughness and also changed the blend mode to soft light. You can use whatever blend mode you want and click on randomize to generate unlimited color grading styles. You can create two of those, one for the highlights, one for the shadows, and then you can use blend if to separate them. In the second technique, we took the color and the atmosphere of one image and used it as color grading. We simply pasted over the image, blurred it a lot, and chose a blend mode. You can stack them up, you can use masks, you can get creative, but that's the basic idea. The third technique is my favorite so far and that is inbuilt presets in Camera Raw. There are standard presets that apply all over the image. There are adaptive presets like whitening teeth, enhancing face, increasing the texture of the hair, and of course you can control their amount with the amount slider. And then there are step presets like adding grain, adding vignette. Just click on the amount you want, and you're good to go. The fourth technique is using color grading inside of Camera Raw. If you have decided this is the color I want in the highlights, midtones, and shadows, just pick that color right here, set the lightness, set the hue, saturation, and you're good to go. The fifth technique is selective color, and I recommend it when you have a lot of colors, desirable colors, in your image. You just target the color you want and modify it with those four sliders. Also, you can modify whites, neutrals, and blacks. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.